Hello, this is Dr. Ben Finio here along with Hey Hey, Mr. Googles, and Cookie Monster to make a quick compilation video to answer the five most common questions about Zoom according to Google Search Autocomplete. Now, I do have much longer videos that go into more detail on some of these topics, but in this video, I will try to give quick answers to the following five questions. How do I raise my hand? How do I change my name? How do I change my background? How do I share my screen? And how do I see everyone? So, number one, how do I raise my hand? This is a feature built into Zoom that your teacher might ask you to use to get their attention instead of either unmuting yourself and interrupting them or physically raising your hand on camera as that can be hard for them to see if they are teaching a large class with a lot of people. So, to use the raise your hand feature, you need to move your mouse down to the bottom of the screen, click on the participants button, that is going to open a window over here on the right with a list of all the participants in the meeting. At the bottom of that window, you will see a raise hand button. When you click that, a little hand icon will appear next to your name. Your teacher will see that when they check the participants list, that will let them know that you have a question. Number two, how do I change my name? This one can be especially important if you have multiple family members sharing a computer and when you log into your meeting, it's still showing the last person's name. Luckily, this is pretty easy to do. You just move your mouse to hover over your picture, right click, select rename. This will give you a pop-up window where you can type a new name and then click OK. For example, I'm going to change that to Mr. Ben. Hit OK, and now it will display that name over your video. That's what everybody else will see here and also in the participants list. Number three, how do I change my background? Now, this is one where I do have a much longer video that goes into more detail. You can find a link to that in the description, but the very quick explanation now is that you need to move your mouse down to the lower left corner of your Zoom window, click the little up arrow next to stop video, and then select choose virtual background. This will bring up a window where you can select from a variety of preloaded images and even videos that Zoom will put behind your head. There is also a button where you can upload your own image or video. Now, if you don't see these options at all, or it only lets you do a picture and not a video background, then your computer is probably too old for it to work. You will have to check Zoom's website for the system requirements for these features. Number four, how do I share my screen? Now, this is one that can have a lot of nuances to it. I do have a much more detailed video that'll walk you through the whole process. But the short answer is that you go down to the bottom of your Zoom window and click the Share Screen button. Now, if you are a student, your teacher might have screen sharing for participants disabled. So when you click that button, you will get a pop-up message that says Host Disabled Participant Screen Sharing. So, for example, if you're giving a presentation in class, you will need to ask your teacher to enable that before you can do it. Once screen sharing has been enabled, you click that button and it will give you a list of everything that is open on your computer. So this is a very good reason not to be browsing the web or playing games during class because you don't want to accidentally share that. The best option is to just pick the program you want to share. For example, if you have a PowerPoint presentation you're sharing, click that, then click share screen, as opposed to selecting screen one, or if you have two monitors, screen one or screen two, that will share everything you have on that screen. So if you have your email open or a messaging program like Slack, you would risk inadvertently sharing that. Again, your safest bet is to just pick the program you want to share, then click share. Zoom will switch to a view where you are now sharing this content with the other people in the meeting. Again, it gets kind of complicated in terms of who exactly sees what. I have a much more detailed video that goes into that in more depth. And last but not least, number five, how do I see everyone? So one of my earliest tutorials talks about all of the different view controls in Zoom, but the really quick lesson is that there's this little view button in the upper right, that allows you to toggle between speaker view and gallery view. So gallery view is what I'm in now where everybody is shown equal sized. Speaker view shows one person much bigger than everybody else. And it will put all the other thumbnails in a small view across the top here. Now I am in a meeting with just four people so I can still see everyone across the top. If you are in a larger class with 30 or 50 or 100 people, it can't necessarily fit everyone on one screen. So it would give me little arrows up here so I can scroll left and right. But if you want to see as many people as possible at once, make sure you are in gallery view. Now there is one setting you can tweak that will allow you to see more people in gallery view if you are in a very large class. So again, go down to this stop video button, hit the little up arrow next to that, select video settings, scroll down to the bottom of this, 
and there is an option that allows you to select whether to show a maximum of 25 people or a maximum of 49 people in gallery view. So 25 might be selected by default. If you want to increase that, switch this over to 49 and you'll be able to fit more people on one screen. So that's it for five most common questions in Zoom according to Google Search Autocomplete. If you are someone who is helping other people use Zoom or starting to learn using Zoom yourself, then hopefully that will save you some time with looking up the answers to these questions later. As always, if you have a question, a comment, or a suggestion for another tutorial, I cannot promise that I can help with everything, but I will do my best to get back to you, so please go ahead and leave a comment below this video. Thank you.